Hello and welcome to Kedrick Farms. Today we're going to be taking a look at a new map that's been released by Large H Mapping. This is Fredericksburg, Virginia. Large H has been a friend of the community for quite a while and he sent this map over to me admittedly a couple of weeks ago and I just haven't had a chance to take a look at it yet. And so I'm super excited to dive in and uh, explore this map a little bit and show it off to you guys. If we pull up the PDA here, you can see that this is a uh, standard size map, but Large H has done something a little bit different on this map in that uh, there's only a handful of fields and there's a good chunk of the map that uh, isn't necessarily laid out as farmland, which I think gives it a little bit more realistic feeling. Uh, you can see that the PDA here is uh, based on a real GPS uh, image here and so you know in reality these are wooded areas with houses and homes and businesses and different things and so the only farm areas here are what he's mapped out and so this is a really cool kind of layout um there are two farms on the map uh you spawn into this location here which is one farm and then up here in the top part of the map is set up as kind of a secondary smaller farm i have started the game on new farmer mode which starts us off with just this one little plot of land up here and no equipment, uh, which I thought was an interesting decision. So um, I think this map is really set up for people who want to uh, start small and kind of grow into a, um, I guess I'll call this kind of a medium sized farm here. If we look at field 10 as our biggest field, you can see it's 17.63 uh, hectares, which would be about 43 and a half acres. Even the biggest field here on the map isn't uh, overly large. And so let's start off by taking just a quick look at the two farms. So this is the larger of the farms, which is uh, where you spawn in at. And uh, you have a small uh, cow barn here on this farm. In fact, we're going to go ahead and just buy this farm real quick so that we can uh, see how that works. Um, this bigger farm here is only 50000 so we're going to be able to afford that pretty easily. And you can see here this is a, indeed a small cow barn um, where you're going to be able to put some cows. Uh, you've got all of your uh, triggers, a water trigger here. You've got your slurry pit over here. Uh, and I'm pretty sure in order to uh, feed them, you're just going to come right in here and drop your feed. So this is a nice little barn, a little bit different than what you might see on some of the bigger maps. And then we've also got uh, a fuel trigger here and a couple of sheds. Now, you can't actually open the large door on this uh, shed from the outside, uh, but you can open the uh, smaller garage door here. And I believe uh, there's a switch in here for opening the larger uh, garage door so we can come in here and get that opened up. So you've got a pretty decent sized uh, shed here uh, for storing some of your equipment. You're going to be able to get a combine uh, pulled in through this larger door. And then over here we have this uh, other shed as well, uh, which you can open up uh, more of a garage uh, work area type shed. And then over here, we've got a line of bins. These are placeables, which you are able to sell if you want to get rid of them. If we pop open the garage here, you can see these Brock bins are in here. Um, you have the 20K uh, liter bins or 20K bushel bins, excuse me, and a 10K bushel bin here. So uh, you do have varying sizes. And uh, if you come in here to silos, you're going to see that those are included here and you're going to be able to place these back down somewhere if you want and it gives you a fair amount of storage here on the map. Uh, you will need an auger to put uh, grain into these. Uh, they are set up with uh, dump triggers as well as uh, emptying triggers. So you will need a set of augers to interact with these bins. I don't believe the augers were included with the map, so that's something that you'll need to uh, supply if you're gonna use these bins on uh, this particular map. Now let's uh, head up here and check out the other farm real quick which is the one that you actually start with, which would be right up here and across that major road. Uh, you can see that we've got uh, small neighborhoods here with uh, houses and yards and such, uh, just kind of decorating the landscape, which is cool. Uh, and then just absolutely large amount of trees here. But I will say that uh, despite there being a ton of trees, um, I haven't had any uh, frame rate issues on this map. Um, I'm holding steady at 60 frames a second, so that's uh encouraging and then if we come up here this uh green house that we have sitting here is actually the piece of property that you start the game off owning so you've got this grass area around the house 
um, in which you could uh, build up a yard and do something with or just uh, do some grass work or something. Uh, but right across the street from that house, you have this small farmyard set up that you're able to uh, purchase. And that is a, a small purchase as well. It's $46,932. And that's going to get you uh, both this farmyard here, which has got an old barn, uh, another machinery shed here. Um, which is a pull-through style, so you've got doors on both ends. Um, you get a couple of bins. You get this kind of lean-to uh, to put some storage in. You get a rusty version of that same diesel fuel trigger. So, you know, I kind of like the uh, contrast between the two farms, where this one's kind of the older, a little bit more run-down uh, farm setup versus uh, the first farm we took a look at is a little bit newer, a little bit bigger, more modern. Uh, and so the other thing that you get when you buy this farmyard is, I believe, also uh, this property with this other house on it here. Now, if we take a quick look at the map again here, you can see around this small farm, we do have uh, four small fields up here. And so if we just take a quick look here, um, you've got this little uh, dirt path here that'll take you back and you've got uh, one field here tucked into the trees and then another field here uh, hidden kind of back behind it. And then to the north of this farm, we've got a, uh, another small field tucked in here. It's a grass field right now behind this house. And then there's one way back here along the uh, outside edge of the map. And uh, there's really no way to get back to this field though. Um, so I don't know. Uh, if this is just here more for decoration to kind of give you uh, visibility into something that's tucked back behind the trees, um, or if the expectation would be to cut your way back to get to that field. Um, but we'll see something similar to that here again in a second as we explore the rest of the map. And then just coming back up here to this small farm, uh, if we come down this road here, you can see that we've got a couple of uh, larger fields here or, you know, I guess medium-sized fields, I would say, on this map, uh, right off of this road that you could expand into. And then, uh, as we saw before, the main farm, or the bigger farm here, has uh, uh, the larger fields kind of built out around it. If we head down this major road, there's a few small fields tucked away behind some of these trees, and then you also have one of your two cell points back here. And so you're going to be able to come back in here and both sell some grain as well as uh, I believe this is the lime trigger here. So you're going to be able to bulk buy some lime if you desire. And uh, you've got uh, little roads here to kind of get back into other areas or other fields on the map here. You've got a couple of fields tucked away back here in the corner. And then you've got uh, what appears to be a cattle pasture that I think is just here more from a decoration perspective. What I like about this map, if we kind of come down here into a normal perspective, is it's set up well so that when you look off into the distance, you don't really notice the map edge there as much as you do on some maps. And so I really like that some attention has been paid to um, obscuring the edges of the map a little bit. I mean, when I look into the distance here, I just see rolling hills uh, over the trees. So. That's kind of a cool touch. And then if we head back up to the main road here and fly over towards uh, the main farm again, we'll just take a quick look back behind this farm. Um, there's this dirt road that takes you back to a couple of the larger fields behind the farm here. And uh, you get to a couple of grass fields here. And then you kind of dead end here against this river, which is really cool. Uh, and this is a nice graphical touch. The river looks just amazing here back on the back side of the map. And what I noticed, though, is that there's a few fields back here uh, that you can't actually get to. Um, they were defined. It looks like he might have been planning to do something there. Um, I gu I'm guessing that the NPCs will continue to grow things on these fields, so you might uh, catch glimpses of crops and stuff between the trees. You can kind of see if we get down here um, that there's an actual field back there. If I come up uh, over, you could definitely see it. And so I think this is a nice touch in that it's just going to help the map border blend in and feel more realistic. Um, you can't actually go over there, though. If I turn on the uh, 
hitbox thing, you can see that there is actually a uh, uh, invisible wall set up here to prevent you from going into that part of the map. And so it is at this point at least just designed to be decorative. So uh, again, this is a, a unique style to map making that I haven't seen on a lot of maps. Uh, a lot of map makers try to use every ounce of the map and then your boundaries tend to feel a little bit um, awkward sometimes. And so I really like that uh, if you're playing in the core middle part of this map, it's going to be more immersive. You're not going to really notice that you're hitting up against a map boundary most of the time. And then, uh, you know, you've got nice details here, like the power lines coming through the middle area. Uh, I see this all the time in uh, different areas in the Midwest. So really cool little details there. Uh, you've got a lot of houses kind of along this main road, uh, which is uh, kind of cool. And then if we come back here into the last part of this map, um, I'll show off two things. One is uh, this is a uh, another one of those areas where you can't actually go back in here. There's an invisible boundary that won't let you go down this road. And if we come back out and around uh, into these fields, I'll kind of show you why. And so you've got these big fields here that you'll be farming. Uh, and then back here is a subdivision. And so you've got this nice set of houses uh, and it, you know, just kind of looks like a, a typical subdivision wood that backs up here against the edge of a farmer's field. And so this also has a invisible wall uh, because, I mean, realistically, you're probably not going to be allowed to bring your farm equipment uh, through the middle of that subdivision. And so it's there to uh, look cool and add that little bit more depth and realism to the scenery around you. Uh, but you can't actually drive back in there, which I understand from an artistic perspective, but I do think it's a missed opportunity if you wanted to do a little bit uh, more role play or something on a map like this. Uh, he's gone to a lot of work to add some detail and put all these houses and uh, roads and stuff in there. It'd be nice if we could uh, take a truck back there and, you know, drive around on those roads. So um, I think that that would probably be my one... Uh, small criticism of the map is I would have probably liked to uh, not been boxed in. I like that the decoration is there. I just would have liked to been able to drive over there and uh, potentially do what I want in that area. Um, but the artistic side of it, it does uh, make the map feel that much more immersive. And then if we come back here, uh, we've got the uh, shop. So Green Line Service Corps, this is where you're going to be able to purchase your vehicles, and then I believe they're going to spawn uh, somewhere over here in this dirt area. And then uh, I believe we have the animal dealer here just down the road. And so you're going to be able to purchase your animals here uh, in this building. And then one thing we missed if we come back up here by the shop is that uh, this ramp here, I believe, is the bale sell point. And so on the map, there's really only two sell points. Uh, one for grain and then one for uh, it looks like silage because I have seasons on um, but I'm imagining if you didn't have seasons you'd be able to also sell hay and straw bales here uh, like you would in a normal base game and so this has been a uh, quick map tour of Fredericksburg Virginia um, not maybe a map for everyone but I really like seeing uh, some variation in the maps that are coming out. I think too many people try to do the exact same thing over and over again. And so for me, this is a really awesome little map. If you're looking to uh, run a, a single farm, there's technically, I guess, two farms on here. And so if you're looking to give yourself a challenge, have kind of a smaller farming experience and build up to a more mid-sized farm over time, this might be the map for you. As always, I appreciate Large H sending this map over for me to uh, demo to you guys. This has been a lot of fun. I love checking out new maps. And so I'll have a link to uh, his Facebook page and a link to his itch.io page where the map has been officially released. So head on over there and uh, check him out. Large H has also released another map that I did a uh, demo on, which was Glenwood Farm, which is another map that's set in Virginia, I believe in the Madison County area. And so... Uh, for me, it's really cool to see maps coming out from different parts of the country as well. So huge shout out to Large H for sending this over for me to check out and being such an awesome active member on our Discord community. If you're not aware, we have a uh, Kedrick Farms Discord server. The link is in the description below. 
it's a great place to uh, come and hang out with a bunch of different people, uh, sharing mods, getting help. Uh, we have a fair number of modders and map makers on the community server now as well. And so it's uh, really been awesome to see it continue to grow. That's all for today. Kedrick, out. I did it. I broke through the wall. Easy development tools for the win. If you get going fast enough, you can just uh, break straight through the invisible walls. I'm in. I can shop for a house now.